Hi, everyone. My name is Carol Ann from Tessie Tennis Living, and we're so thrilled that you're joining us today. If it's your first time here, please don't forget to subscribe. We have a wonderful series, a YouTube series called Creating Your Own Success. And of course, it's based on Anne Marie Sabbath's book called What Self Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't. And the key is. 52 Ways to Create Your Own Success. And Anne-Marie Sabbath is, of course, with us every week for this series. And she is generous and kind enough to share the keys to creating your own success. And this book has been absolutely brilliant. As you can see, my little post-it notes, I've been really digging in. There's so much great information in here. And we are bringing you this wonderful information so that you too can create your own success and now we're going to dig in if you've looked at our other two videos we have two up so far and they are uploaded every monday before noon so be sure to stay tuned and look for our series on youtube and again don't forget to subscribe and now we are into week three and we have some wonderful juicy tidbits to share with you today and I particularly love these tips. They're really essential for learning how to create your own success. So let's get started. Enough of me blabbering on. So you all know Anne Marie Sabbath. And if you don't, definitely head on over to her website. Check it out, annemariesabbath.com. Of course, I'll have all the links in the description as well as running across the screen too. Don't forget to check it out. Check out her other books. She's a seasoned author. Anne Marie, is this your ninth book? I always it get is my, it is my ninth book. Your this line. is yes. her ninth book, and she also has a tenth book out. Which stay tuned because we have some good juicy stuff coming ahead um, about her tenth book as well. So, Anne Marie, what are we going to be focusing on today? We're working on habit five, and these habits are brilliant. So today, you're going to talk to us about being a time master, right? And that's so important. It sure is. Until I was 35, I used to run late. I was born two weeks late, and I was late for my wedding. <laughs> All of 60 seconds. And when I turned 35 and began my, what is now my 33-year-old business, I realized that in order to be successful, People manage their time. And so I learned how to set priorities. And this is such an important topic that I'm thrilled we're sharing today. Related to priorities, I would like to share some tips for managing your time. Number one, when you manage your time, you can manage your money. Think about it. People who can manage their money actually know how to manage time. So people who are notoriously early or on time mm -hmm. can also manage their money. And I will put, I will put money down. In fact, I'd like your uh, listeners, your viewers to be able to do this little exercise. I want them to write down one person's name and next to that person's name, I want them to write down if that person is notoriously early on time or late. All right. Now that they have done it, I want them to ask themselves, is the person who is E early or O on time, typically the person whose bank account you probably want? Mm -hmm. And you'll probably say yes. The other question is, is the person who has L late next to his or her name, the person who is always a day late and a dollar short think about it this is an important way to know how people create their own success so again i'm not saying that we should point fingers what i'm saying is when somebody mentions carol ann someone mentions me someone mentions the viewer out there listening at this moment what is that person going to put next to our name early on time or late so mastering your time is essential in order to master your money. 
That's such a great point, Anne-Marie. And it's something that people don't realize the magnitude of. And I love how you covered mastering time in your book. You went over the need to and want to aspect. Can you kind of explain that and why it's so important? Definitely. Uh, I have uh, several strategies for managing your time. And with that, it's a matter of balancing what you need to do and want to do. Mm. So let me give you an example. When you're running a business, and I know that a lot of entrepreneurs are out there listening, it, you need to be able to develop relationships or prospect for new business. That's a need. You need to maintain existing business relationships. It's much easier to keep a client than to find a new one. Oh, yes. And so, yes, it's essential. Now, the question is, you want to spend dinner with family members. That's important. You want to exercise. You want to create time to think. So the question is, what is your need that day? And what is your want? And if it's after business hours, then your needs will turn into wants and wants will turn into needs. So that's how you balance your life. So mastering your time is a matter of focusing on what is the most important thing to you. That's essential. May I share something else? Of course. Well, we're going to talk about this during upcoming weeks. However, one of the things that is essential is when you have a workday planned, sometimes you are planning to do something and then something is given to you by a manager or a new client prospect comes in, then you have to reprioritize. So this is important but back to what do I need to do? What do I want to do? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I promise will be a benefit to anyone watching this is always tell people what you're going to do. Tell them after the time you're going to get it to them and then get it before. So for example, I, if I say to you, Carolyn, I will have hashtag words to you by tomorrow at noon. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you will have them by 9 a.m. tomorrow. So when you under promise over deliver, you are setting priorities. And when other things come into play, you don't have to stress. You can still take time with your family instead of saying, I need two more hours. I can't have dinner with you, etc. This is important. Another thing that's essential is touch things only once. So if you get mail, some of us still get mail. Mm -hmm. If you get mail, then touch it once. Touch it and open it and put it in the pile of bills to be paid. Or touch it, open it, throw it away. Whatever it is, people should take their time and treat their time like money. That is very important for setting priorities and for managing time. I love that tip because so many times... Um, like when I get backed up, I'll touch something and then I'll come back 10 minutes later. I'll go, oh, my gosh, I have to do this. Touch it, put it down. Yes. That's such a waste of time. And it's such an important tip. I love that, Anne-Marie. Love it. Well, it really does wake, make a big difference. And I have to share a few of the quotes from the several of the self-made millionaires who are in this book. I love this. Once Perserian Boma says, be prepared to put in 30 hours a day because 24 are simply not enough. Ah. So do what it takes. Another one, get up earlier than anyone else, stay up later than anyone else. Use your energy well. And Drew Reese, who you would love, says, don't waste a minute and don't waste a movement. I start early and end late. So again, in order to be successful, whatever that means to each person, listening and watching, recognize that time is a major factor. We all have the same 24 hours in each day. What are we doing to prioritize what we want to do and need to do? Yes. So Anne-Marie, I remember when I was reading your book, there was a quote from George Schaefer. I loved it. Could you share that with our readers? You bet. This has to deal with punctuality. Many people live on the East Coast and act like they're on Pacific Standard Time when it comes to promptness, or shall I say, the lack thereof. <laughs> and so there are a few phrases that I absolutely live by. And remember, I had to learn them. When you're early, you're on time. When you are on time, you're late. 
when you are late, you are out of luck. In fact, when you are 10 minutes early, you are five minutes late. Carol Ann, may I give you a real life example of a person who of kept his job? Let me tell you this. I had a client, major corporation, and there were two people who were hired at the same time. One person always got to work early and was the most incompetent person that you could imagine. There was another person who was incredibly efficient. However, that person always slid into home base late. Mm. Two years later, it was time for budget cuts and they had to unload some people. Guess who was <gasps> let go? No. The most efficient person who came showed up late or the person who was the most incompetent, however, always showed up for work early. What would that you say? Is incredible. I bet you they let go of the competent person who was late, right? They let go of the competent person who was notoriously late. And this is something that I want your listeners mm. to hear. Listen to this. It's so important. Viewers, please listen up. You don't have to be the best. I know you are. However, you don't have to be the best. You don't even have to be the smartest. You simply have to be the most responsive. So tell people what you're going to do. Do it before. Make sure, as I said before, you are kept waiting. Never keep others waiting. And charity begins at home. So if you say to your family member, honey, I will be home at 7, that means you better be home at 645. So under promise, over deliver. Wonderful. Love it. And I love that quote, too. I'm going to definitely print that out and frame it. Um, okay, next, one of the other things that I loved in your book was being able to stay focused and this whole topic of multitasking. Now, multitasking has become a big topic lately, and I've read so many articles. There are TED Talks, articles on LinkedIn, and one of the things that really impressed me is that if you continue to multitask for years and you keep doing this, that it can actually drop your IQ by 15 points. That is a fact. You can go check it out. There's an article on LinkedIn. Also, there's a new trend for what they, they call slow motion multitasking. And you cover that beautifully, Anne Marie. So if you can share some of the key multitasking points to wrap things up, we would love it. Thank you. Well, first of all, multitasking looks like you are moving forward. However, what's happening is you're really slowing down each activity. So that's number one. In fact, to your point, studies have shown when you start something and now you have a ding or a ring, mm -hmm. you go to your email or text or a phone, what happens is when you get back to the project that you were working on, it actually takes 10 minutes for your brain to recondition itself to f focus on that project. So here's the case. In order to create your own success so that you use your time well, schedule an appointment with yourself. That is essential. Have some free time. I get up at 5 in the morning so that I don't have to schedule my 5 to 6 a.m. time and I do what I want. I have my loosey-goosey time. And then at 6.30, I stay focused. I have a list of exactly what I need to do. And that brings us to the next point. Create an agenda for yourself. Mm -hmm. What is on your list to do? Make sure you do that the day before because this way you have a roadmap that is called setting priorities. Now, when you do, setting priorities is begin a project with an end in mind. And you're very good about that, Carolyn. I have to tell you, when you. we are ready to do a particular uh, video cast, you say, this is the goal, this is what we need to cover, and this is ABC. And so you have that mindset, begin with that goal in mind. And then what's essential for priorities is when you're wrapping up a situation, a meeting, a call, Ask yourself what the next step is for that project. That next step is for that relationship. 
And so this is very important. In fact, I'll tell you on a personal level, I have one friend and every time we get together, she has her calendar with her and she says, when are we going to schedule the next meeting? We look at our electronic calendars and what we do is we get the next meeting on the books. That saves so much time. So the key is setting priorities, treating your time the same way you treat currency, the same way you treat energy is essential for creating your own success. And be careful, you may just become a self-made millionaire by doing that. Yay! So so essentially you're telling folks, um, prioritize and learn, like do one thing well at a time and set yourself up for anything that you see is in your needs list or want list and kind of like prioritize it, right? It is prioritizing. And when you see you have an interruption, recognize that. The key is do not schedule too much at once. Right. I tell you, doctors and attorneys act like they're on a different time zone. And so I say that to you. I'm, I hold them in high esteem. The most important thing is choose your friends wisely. In the big scheme of things, focus on yourself and how you manage your time. And surround yourself with people who do know how to manage your time, whether friends, family members, even doctors, attorneys, anyone in the professional services industry, people who can manage their time, can manage their money, and mm -hmm. will take care of you the best. Anne Marie, let me ask you while we're on that topic, why do you think that doctors and lawyers are so notorious? For Do you have any idea for, for why they keep us waiting for such long periods of time like that? Do they over promise and over book? I mean, well, the key is, first of all, they don't know how to manage a business. Mm -hmm. I have, I only go to doctors that will see me within five minutes. <gasps> and kidding. Only. And what I do is if they tend to run notoriously late, I always make sure I'm the first one in. That's it. I'm the first appointment of the day if I have to wait for two months. Otherwise, That's I go to smart. urgent care. That's now, very smart. The other thing is, thank you. If you schedule time during your lunch hour, when I get there at 1130, I say, you know, I'm on my lunch hour. So if I cannot be seen before 1145, I'm going to have to cancel. And guess what? They tend to get me in. Yeah, rather than lose you as a customer. Exactly. I love those tips. Love them. Um, now, I wanted to ask you another question, too. You, you talked about the fact that you get up at 5 a.m. every morning and you love that time. You cherish that time. It really sets the tone for the day, right? Yes, it's how my do you do that though. How do you how do you like what time do you go to bed at night? Because I'll tell you why I'm asking. A lot of people say to me that they would love to be able to get up early and be productive, be more productive, but they go to bed too late because they're so busy working. Do you have any advice or tips for folks? Sure, sleep fast. That's pretty easy. <laughs> well, seriously, you know, I'll go to bed sometimes at eleven. AM and I don't need a lot of sleep. And so what happens is I allow myself to wake up naturally knowing that I start work at 8 AM. And so what I do is uh, my body says, get up, have your quiet, free time to do what you want. I check the market. I check the pre-market. I look at the headlines. I take time to think about what I may need to be working on. And maybe I haven't had an idea about it. However, I have my list ready to go. And then I start to focus around 7.30 a.m. after getting dressed, et cetera. So the key is you maybe you do it at the end of the day. Maybe you do it at the beginning of the day. Take your day, the time where you have the highest energy and use that time. That's called for setting priorities for your time, brain entrancement. We talked about that one time, brain Love. entrancement. That means take an environment and think. I do not want my dog pawing me. I don't want my partner talking to me. I have totally quiet time because our house does not get up until 7.15. So I have my 5 to 6.30 time for me. I love that. And it's so, you know, people might be saying, well, what does this have to do with success? It all has to do with creating your own success because these are keys to creating your own success. And there are so many of them. That's why you wrote a book about it, right? 
This is why I wrote a book, and I will tell you, when I interviewed these 30 people came from nothing, one of the consistencies that I saw is they have a schedule. Mm. They maintain a schedule, and they may have certain times, maybe Friday uh, after work, Saturday morning, even if they're retired, they keep a schedule. This is a roadmap for them to know where they are going with the direction of what they want to accomplish. So this is a secret for creating your own success. Rather than doing five things poorly, do mm -hmm. one thing well at a time. Brilliant. Any other last thoughts before we wrap things up about your keys that we discussed today? Well, I would say probably the most important thing is recognize you can do it, you just have to want it. I said this in the first series, Andy Adalgo, who's one of the self-made millionaires, said you can do anything you want. And the funny thing is, is we're going to talk about this, however, make a point of surrounding yourself with people you want to be like. By doing that, you will then manage your time better. You will manage your money better because we are the byproduct of our priorities. We're the byproduct of how we treat life. And so my recommendation is for each person out there to be able to make a point of writing down the time you have to leave, not the time you have to be somewhere. And oh, I will yeah. come to you. Thank you. It will change your life. Write down the time you have to leave rather than the time you have to be there. I will tell you, when my children graduated from college, my biggest concern is, will they be successful? I knew at one dinner that they would be. And the reason is we were coming from three different directions. And you know what? I made sure I got there 10 minutes early. Both of them were there earlier than me. That told me something, that they know how to manage their lives, and they do. Terrific. Love it. And, you know, I can't reiterate this enough. Um, you know how they say you have to do things like 21 times for it to become habit? Yes. I noticed that when I'm reading and rereading these keys, they seem to like mean so much more to me during the course of my day. I find myself catching myself, like especially with the don't pick things up over and over, just touch it once. That made a big impact on my day. That happened to be something that I did way too much. Pick things up, put it down, pick it up again, put it down. So Anne-Marie, I have to thank you for that because that improved like the quality of what I was doing, it was brilliant. Thank you, and you have extra time for yourself. Because we know it doesn't mean we should not continue to do it. So it's essential. These are such simple things. And once again, I want to make sure your viewers know that they probably have 50 of the 52 secrets already mastered. Mm -hmm. This is what's so amazing about this book. It's not because I wrote it. It's because this is information that has been gathered what self-made millionaires do that most people don't are very simple things that you can do. It's simply a matter of putting what you know into practice, living your life by being good to yourself, by treating your time well. This is the name of the game. It's so true. It's living with intention, you know, living with intention. Brilliant. Okay, so don't forget, folks, we have an episode every Monday and our next episode we're going to be touching on some more important keys like how to become a lifelong learner what does it mean essentially and how do you do it um, becoming a minimalist so you might say well why does minimalism have anything to do with creating success wait because you'll be surprised to find out it has a huge impact on it and, of course, we're going to be talking about the importance of planning ahead. And Anne-Marie has some brilliant tips for, for you guys to be able to do that. So please don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up as well and share. We would greatly appreciate it if you could share these videos. Um, we put a lot of work into them, and we want you to enjoy them and benefit by them. So if you could share them, you would be doing us a great favor. Thank you all so much. And Anne-Marie, any parting words? Yes. I'm so grateful to you and certainly to the viewers that any uh, person who does email us to tell us 
what they have put into practice. In fact, the very first person emailing you, and I will let them uh, let you give the email, I would love to send them an autographed copy of what self-made millionaires do that most people don't. Awesome. Yes. Don't forget, we have a book giveaway every week. So please be sure to comment in the in the YouTube video itself where YouTube gives you space to make comments. Anybody leaving a comment will be, their name will be put in our random generator and you'll receive a wonderful copy of Anne Marie's autographed copy. Right, Anne Marie? Absolutely. And this, like, unless they prefer an, audi an audible or a digital, I would be happy to send them an actual copy of the book. All we need is their postal address. Yes. Wonderful. So you'll get it in any format that you desire. Okay. So Anne Marie, thank you so much. This was wonderful. It's always it's my fun. pleasure. Well, my goal is to assist people in creating what they want out of life. And so I, my goal, and I hope that we have done this through this YouTube program. Yes, we are. And we have many more great episodes to come. Thank you all so very much. We'll see you next Monday. Bye now.